Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today for this Twin Motion webinar. My name is Martin, I will be your host today. Um, basically, what we are going to do today is just walk you through some of the best tips and tricks I used on all my projects working inside Twin Motion. Uh, so we do this webinar because we recently started a playlist on our YouTube channel uh, with just some basic uh, tips. And uh, so we saw that there is a lot of interest in those kind of video. So we thought, why not making a webinar based on some of the, the best tips and tricks uh, that are a bit hidden, uh, that can help you um, get a, a better understanding of, of Twin Motion and yeah, just help you get the best out of Twin Motion. So, so let's get started. First off, a few things to know about uh, the library. Let's open it. Uh, here we have a button with the, the three dot button over here that open this menu here. By default, when you install Twinmotion, it's um, it's set like that. So the, the lock is disabled in, and the synchronize button is enabled. So what this does is that, uh, so what does the, the first option, the lock option, it lock the library. So when it's not on, when you add an object to your scene, it automatically closes the library. So you have more, uh, the, the viewport take the, the whole size of your monitor. It, it gives you more relay state of your project. And it's not what I want in most of the case. So what I used to do is just lock this. And now at each time I will be adding one object to my uh, project, the library will remain locked in uh, the position I've set up. Uh, so what you can do is expand so you can see three rows of objects inside your library. But I prefer to stick with two so I have a bigger preview, a bigger uh, preview of my scene. The second option is the synchronized option. So when this option is turned on, so as you can see here, the option is on and I am in my cars folder inside the library. If I enter, for example, the vegetation paint tool, it automatically switch to the trees folder. So it just to help like the, the, the newcomer inside Twinmotion better understand the kind of object they need to add inside the Dropbox over here. So here you can add some trees. But let's, for example, say that I was already in my grass folder and I wanted to paint some grass. If I enter that, it will automatically switch again to the tree folder. And since I'm already pretty familiar with Twin Motion, I prefer to leave that off uh, so I can navigate myself directly in the folder I want. So just so you know how those two options work. Next thing is uh, maybe the shortcut. Uh, we, we have a lot of questions about how we are navigating this uh, fluently in this scene, how, how we can be uh, like that uh, smooth uh, using Twinmotion. So we'll come up here, click on the help button, click on shortcut and switch to the English shortcut. So the key I'm using all the time is WASD and Q and E. So W will be move forward, move backward, left and right. And Q and E will be to move the camera up and down. So let's switch to twin motion. So first W, so I'm moving uh, forward in front of my project and move backward, left and right. And then I can use Q and E to move up and down. So it, it takes a bit of practice. Uh, most of the time, people that are familiar with uh, video games on, on a computer will be more uh, familiar with those type of control. But we are, use, we are seeing a lot of users just using the, the scroll wheel like that. I'm just switching speed. They're just using the scroll wheel to get inside their project. Then they are turning the head around. Then, then again, scroll wheel to, to move up. Then again, turning the head around. So it's it's really time consuming. It's it's a bit of pain to watch. But uh, not everyone is aware of the, the, those kind of controls. So so yeah. WASD and Q and E for moving up and down. When you start to be familiar with that, you, you will see that you, you can give a, a better understanding of your project while you are navigating inside it also. Um, what you can also do is use a gaming controller. 
so first, what I will do here is switch to full screen. And while I'm in full screen, I will come to uh, the information panel over here. So here is the shortcut I was mentioning. Uh, so WASD, or also you can also use the arrows. And if you are using a touch screen, so if you have a touch screen plugged inside your money, uh, your computer, you can also use like one finger to turn the head around and two fingers to move in the direction. And then here you have the shortcut using a gamepad. So it's also something that I'm seeing a lot of users doing, especially when they want to present their project. Instead of being locked behind their mouse and keyboard, they can just pick a controller. It can be even like a wireless controller, like the Xbox One or Xbox 360 controller. And you can just navigate inside your project with the, with the controller over here. And this can be done in this full screen mode like that, but it can also be done in the Dreammotion editor. Also, while you are navigating inside your project at any moment, you can press the M shortcut that will enable the physics. So that means that here I've uh, basically switched from uh, the helicopter, the drone view to uh, the pedestrian view. That means that now I am walking on the ground at the height of a human being. So here, for example, if I go toward my stairs, I will be able to climb those stairs. I don't really like the sounds, especially since I'm recording the video. So if you want to change that, you can go to the preference. Uh, you can go to the appearance and here you can customize the sound for each uh, kind of material that we have inside Twinmotion. So for example, let's uh, remove the sound on the concrete and on the wood and on the glass. So now I won't have any sound anymore. As you can see here, when I'm moving uh, down the stairs, the camera is a bit bumpy because it, it plays the camera on top of each stairs. And a small trick that I will give you, it's already been published as one standalone video on our YouTube channel, but it's also always worth mentioning. You can place uh, a basic geometry, so you can import your own geometry, but you can also place it directly inside Twinmotion like that. I will be using a basic box that I will scale like that. Then I will move my box roughly in the middle of my stairs. And I will just scale it in this direction. And then I will just need to move it so it uh, it just touch the edge of each stairs. As you can see here, it does uh, it touch at the, the, the up, upper part of my stair, but not at the bottom. It's because when I'm turning this object, like here, I have a snap every five degrees. It's an option that you can customize in the preference over here. So coming back here, I will come to the angle snap, and here I will just switch to one degree. So I will have a snap uh, every one degree. Oop. So I think it's roughly what I wanted to do. Like my uh, geometry is exactly on the edge of each stair. So now my, um, my physics is still enabled. That means that if I now start to move toward this shape, the camera won't be bumpy anymore. It will be like a, a smooth transition going from the, the first, going to the first floor. And now the last thing I want to do is just apply a basic glass material and set the opacity to 0%, so I don't see the shape. So now when I, be, when I will be walking inside my project, I will have like a smooth camera transition. Next thing is uh, like talking a bit uh, about the gizmo. Uh, I've been scaling a, an object inside my scene, but um, let's see how does that work. So by default, uh, when you select an object, you are in the uh, Move Gizmo. So you can open this menu. Uh, let me actually close the material library to remove some of the icon icons over here. So when you select an object, you are natively, by default, in the Move Gizmo. That means that you can move this object on two axes by clicking on this area here. You can also move on each in individual axis like that. You can also rotate the object over this axe, 
and you can also manually snap the object on the geometry you are pointing on. So for example, here, now that my chair is up in the air, if I want to place it uh, back on my concrete, I can move it like that approximately, but I can also use the snap tool to just snap it on the geometry it was on before. Now, if I want to rotate my object over different axes, I can click here and hold my mouse to open this menu, and I can switch to Rotate Tool or to the Scale Tool. I can also use Tab to switch from the different tools. So the second tool, the Rotate Tool, allows me to make some rotation over, over different axes, like I'm doing here. For example, if I select this frame over here, it's uh, not directly against my wall, so what I will do here is move the object over here. Let's go on this side, like here, just moving that uh, next to my wall and just rotating up like that. So it's well aligned on my wall. Same thing here, if I select this object, I can just move it here and just add more orientation like that. And finally, the scale tool. So again, just pressing the tab key to switch to the scale tool. Here I can scale on one individual axe, like here, or I can scale the whole object. After that, let's talk a bit about um, the hierarchy that you have inside Twinmotion through the, the send graph over here. So in this project, I've imported quite a lot of um, different FBX files. So you can find them over here. One for the context, one from the technical part of my project, one from the window, etc. Some of them are open, some of them are closed, so you can see what's inside. Uh, but right now, it's a bit messy. Every, I've added all the, the objects uh, one after the other, so I didn't organize well my scene graph. So first, what I will do is right-click on my scene graph and click on Collapse Hierarchy. This will close every folder. Um, now, first thing what that I will do is start to move uh, some of the objects that I've placed it that I've placed inside my project in some folder to better organize my project. So for example, here we have some construction assets that are not visible right now. I can just turn them on and off so for, to show you. For example, here we have like the, the construction machinery. What I will do is just select all those construction assets and place them inside my construction folder. Next thing I will do is uh, here, for example, we have some grass. What I will do is select this grass and add it to my vegetation folder. It's a folder that I've created. So if I want to create, for example, a new folder and add inside this folder all my FBX file, I will just right click on the same graph, the, the, the parent hierarchy on the, on the top. I will click on new container. I will call that, for example, FBX. Now we just select all my FBX file. Now I just place those FBX file into my FBX folder. And now I have my folder that contains basically my whole project. I can also select this folder here and move it wherever, wherever I want. So basically I always want to have my project up top. Then I have a folder containing like the decals that I have in my side my project. I have a folder, sorry. A folder that contain all the vegetation and other folder containing different stuff. Um, next thing I want to do is that uh, show you that now if I add a new object to my scene, let's actually, for example, add a tree, the tree will be added at the bottom of the scene graph, like here. I have created a vegetation folder and I can make all those three come directly inside this vegetation folder. To do that, I will just simply select my vegetation folder. Actually, I will right click on it and set, <coughs> sorry, and set this folder as active container. That means that now every new tree that every actually new object that I will be adding to my project will be placed directly at the bottom of this folder. 
can select back the first three I've added here and move them also directly in my vegetation folder like that. So again, here I have only my vegetation. Next thing is, um, so the vegetation folder is the active parent. That means that now, if, for example, if I switch to another folder and I want to add some characters, if I add a character to my project, it will be still added to this vegetation folder. And it's not exactly what I want. So to avoid that, I would just right click again on my send graph and set again this folder as the new active parent. That means that every new object, every new character like here will be again added at the bottom of the, the hierarchy. Um, if you forget to do that, if you forget to uh, switch a folder as active parent, and if you, for example, like here, I place this woman over here at the bottom of my vegetation folder, you can quickly retrieve all the objects uh, by their type using the filter over here. So for example, if I open filter and open like the characters, here I can select all the characters that I have inside my project. And let's come back over here. As you can see, they are all selected, even though they are in different folders. So what I will do actually before selecting all the characters, I will right click on my send graph and click on new container. And I will create a new folder called characters. And I will do uh, the same way. I will come back over here, select characters. I will select my different character, switch to all again to visualize all my objects. And I will just, while all those objects are still selected, even they are in different folders, they are still selected. I can move all those characters at once into my characters folder. So let's close again all our folder. So now we have a, a folder containing all the characters of the project. It's just a quicker way to, to visualize uh, all those objects. So next thing after that is um, at the bottom of the send graph, um, some of the user never read check this option, but if you click on this arrow here, you will expand the statistic panel. So it's good to know like the, the frame rate that you have inside your project, the number of polygon in your scene. But if you click and hold over here, you can also switch from different tool, like the beam information tool, the transform tool. The transform tool can be real full when you want to precisely place an object inside your scene. So for example, if I select this chair over here, you can visualize like really the, the position inside the world. And you can also switch from uh, like a top view like that. Let's come closer to our project. And here I will be using the clipping tool that we also have in this eye menu over here to cut through the, the floor so I can see uh, the interior of my project. So. The addition of like the transform with the different view can help you really precisely place some object inside your scenes. Um, I actually prefer to work like in a, in perspective like that. Uh, so let's switch over here. And finally, the phasing tool um, can help you like create a phasing, a show the construction step of your project. So in this specific project, I have created like the all, all the different construction um, phase of my project, starting with before it starts. So we have the, the nature, then the, the project starts to be built. So we have the hole in the ground, then we have the foundation, the slabs. We have all the different parts of the, the framing of the house. So you can just uh, visualize like the, the evolution of the, the, the construction with the, the phasing tool. And how the phasing tool works, so it's it's quite basic. It just memorizes the state, hide and unhide of object inside the scene. And yeah, it just memorizes the state, hide and unhide of, of the object. I think we maybe later on we'll have like a, a dedicated tutorial or maybe a dedicated webinar regarding the phasing. So if it's something you are interesting interested in, uh, please mention it in the in the comment in the chat. And uh, it's something that we will add to, to our list of, of tutorials or webinars that, to do. 
So after that, uh, I think we covered everything about the same graph I wanted to mention today. Um, let's switch to uh, maybe a camera. Well, let's actually hide those two guys over here. So let's play down. Let's let's place down a camera. I will enter the media doc image. I will click on the plus to create a new image. I like to work with a, a more cinematic camera. So we'll come on the more over here. We'll enter the camera setting and work with a 50 millimeter camera. So as you can see, my project is not completely in focus anymore. So we need to come back over here, move my camera, and we need to press the recapture button to, to basically refresh, to memorize the new camera position. Next thing I'm usually doing after placing my camera is playing a bit with the depth of field. So this shot might be the best one for that. So let's create another uh, point of view, like closer to our project like that. I will click on uh, create image button again. And here we click on the more camera and I will enable the depth of field. I will come to the more and here I can play with the distance to set up what part of my image is in focus, but I prefer to use the autofocus tool here and just click on the part I want to focus on. Um, also, you can create an animation out of that. So while I'm still in this image, I will come to the media uh, in my breadcrumb, enter the video tool, click on plus to create a new video. This first keyframe contains the exact same setting I have set up in my image. So the same camera focal, the same depth of field. And now I can play with the, the depth of field on different keyframes. So let's actually create a first keyframe where the focus will be on uh, the handle over here. So instead of clicking the plus over here, I will click the plus here to create a, a keyframe before. So this will be my first keyframe. And on the second keyframe, the camera will be over here. What I want is in my first keyframe, I want the focus to be on the handle over here. So I entered the more of the specific keyframe, camera, more, and here I will just focus on my handle. <coughs> so now the depth, uh, the depth of field will uh, switch from this distance to the, the wall over here. So as soon as I leave my first keyframe, the effects start to shift from one uh, from one distance to another, and it's a bit too too quick. So what I would like to do is like have this um, the the doff uh, focalized on the handle for a couple of seconds. So what I will do here is uh, exactly between the two keyframe, I will click on the plus to create a new keyframe that won't affect that my camera movement. It will be exactly the same camera movement. Here in this second, um, yes, here in this second keyframe, what I will do is just set the focus, uh, set the the doff, the the doff distance to the same as my first keyframe on the handle. That means that now those two keyframes will be basically having the same um, focal point, which is the handle. And just after the second keyframe, it will slowly switch from the handle to the wall. So if I come over here and press the play button. As you can see here, uh, this part is in focus and now it will switch to the wall. Just a quick tip when playing with, with the default field inside your, your camera. I'm trying to, to think about everything that I planned to, to say during this webinar. Uh, hope we'll have enough time to cover everything. Uh, so next thing, um, as you may have saw, uh, while, while I was uh, adding some um, some stuff to my project, I was also using uh, those, boot those buttons over here. So let's actually select one of the three that I have inside my project. When you add an object to your scene or when you, you select an object inside your project, you switch to the selection dock, the, the selection dock of this specific object. So it moved me out of my camera and entered me into the um, this Colorado Spruce Dock where I can change the age, I can visualize the height, I can change the, the few other settings. If I want to come back in the media I was in before, 
the long uh, the long way will be by going again into the media video i may have multiple video over here i need to click on the video i want and it will switch me again over here a quicker way to do that will be while my new object is still selected is just to click on this arrow over here which is the back to media it will switch to the media you were in before without also changing your camera point of view so you might be here um, you are just trying to find a new point of view inside your scene and you you moved up one object and you want to just update the last keyframe you were you were in before so the, the quicker way the simpler way will be to use this button over here to switch back to your media and just refresh your point of view also um i was talking about vegetation there is a couple of things i wanted to talk about vegetation um so actually coming back to my first keyframe over here let's pretend that now in this specific shot i want to add an object uh, right now it's a bit too blurry to place precisely something so you can just hit the kit media mode it will quit the media you are in it will remove the the black uh, line uh, that you have on both sides and now you can you are in your scene you are not anymore in your media so you can work uh, again better inside your project so I wanted to add some vegetation uh, and show you uh, quick tips that I've already mentioned in a, in a different video on our YouTube channel, but still it's worth mentioning because it's really time saver. It's the multi-drop tool. So when you add an object, you can just simply drag and drop it from the library to the viewport. But if you simply click on the object, the object is now under your mouse and you can just multi-drop it inside your scene without like, the drag and drop workflow that, that could be time consuming if you want to place vegetation like I'm doing here. So you just click one time of the object, it will select the object and now it's under your mouse, you just click where you want to add the tree. You can do a multi-selection, so for example if you select this tree and hold the Ctrl T control key you can select multiple objects and twin motion will randomly add one of the objects to uh, your project another thing is that if um, when you drag an object like i'm doing here uh, the age of the object is the medium age and you can switch uh, you can change the age by playing with this slider so you can switch to a younger age of the tree or like what we call the adult age of the tree it's not just a basic scale it's really the shape of the tree that can change and uh, some people uh, were struggling to paint like a forest with different age of the same tree so let me just show you that welcome to my context doc vegetation paint tool I will drag the Norway spruce. When you paint first, uh, when I pay, when I first paint this tree, this tree will be painted as the medium age. If I want to add a younger version and an older, and an older version to mimic like a real forest, which doesn't have the same exact tree, but it, it have the same tree species. So I just basically drag and drop the Norway spruce a couple of times. We leave the first variant in the middle age. I will select the second one, enter the settings option, and here I will change the age of the second one. Same thing for the third one. We select this one, click on settings, and switch this one to the, um, like the adult version of the tree. And also now if I want to have like more uh, density of the adult version, I will just while this one is still selected, I can just raise the density of this one. So here I've created a forest with the same tree species, but with different ages. We have the adult variant, we have the young variant, and the medium one. Now, uh, this forest, it's uh, a layer. It's, um, it it memorize the, the area you have painted. That means that if you keep adding object to the Dropbox over here, it will scatter the object onto your wall layer. For example, here I've added some rocks, a bit too much, so we just change the density. I can add some branches like here. Again, a bit too dense, switching to 5%, and maybe also some bushes. So as you can see, 
the, um, the area is still memorized where I've painted my layer and I can just now add more objects and play with the density of all of them at once. Same thing if I want to add like some dandelion or some tall grass. Here we start to have a lot of objects, so you might see sometimes a please wait working progress uh, message. It's just that we have too much object that has been scattered all at once, so it takes a bit of time to process all the data. Uh, some a trick that I'm using in a lot of my projects is uh, sometimes as you can see here we have like um, the, the outline, the background is, is a bit empty, you just see the sky. So what I used to do uh, inside my project is first make sure that I'm painting the vegetation until the end of my geometry, but usually it's, it, it's still a bit empty on the back. So what I used to do is just going into the object primitive. I will draw a basic plane like here. You can just maybe a bit scale it and just be careful so it doesn't uh, go through uh, your geometry like here. I'm just placing a basic geometry over here. Uh, it won't be visible inside my camera, but just to make sure I'm placing the same material. And what I will do here is also paint some tree. So when I will be uh, inside my forest, I might uh, be able to see like just the, the tip of the different tree. So it's fake that we are in a, in a really dense forest. Sorry for the sound, we have some, some motorbikes that are going down in the streets. So it just, yeah, it, it's not like a, a flat horizon, it's not like an empty sky on the background, you can just see some trees. It, it, it fake a bit to the fact that the project is, is in the middle of, of, of a really big forest. Um, next thing, let's come back to our project. Uh, so what I was experiencing a bit with this project, at some point uh, I just wanted to see how the project will look under uh, winter. And the first issue I encounter is this reflection problem. So this is because I'm using some reflection volume. So what is the reflection problem? What, how does they work? So basically, when you place down a reflection probe, like I have over here in front of my window, it creates a 360 image on the surrounding uh, of this point in the space, and it applies this image in the um, reflection of the object uh, within its radius. That means that this reflection is captured at one time inside your project, usually when you add the probe to your project, and then it sticks with this reflection. Here, when you change, for example, the time of day or when you change the weather, it doesn't recapture automatically uh, like the, this image. You will need to recapture that manually. So here, using the filter, I just visualize all my reflection probe. I select all of them using the shift key and I just click on update button to reflect to recapture all my probes. So now I have some snow inside my reflection. Just keep in mind that this is just for the viewport when you are visualizing visualizing this inside Twin Motion. If in when you export a video, if you have like uh, a first part like here in the summer and a second part in winter, it automatically recapture all the probes. So it's it's really just when when you are working inside the viewport. So the second problem I had when uh, working inside this snowy and very and very Oh, sorry, this snowy scene, okay, <laughs> sorry for my bad English, is uh, is this little problem that you can see over here. In Twinmotion, we have an automatic occlusion system that prevents particles from going inside your project. So how does that work? Uh, if I place down a box over here, let's scale down the box over here like that. So basically how it works, uh, when we have a mask that is going from the top to the bottom and when it touch a geometry it stop casting this snowy material and it stop uh, falling down uh, rain or snow and we didn't want like to have a straight edge so we have this kind of uh, blurry edges to, to just to be a bit more realistic 
The limit of the system right now is that it doesn't work with um, glazing. So glass material won't stop like the particle and the, the, the snow material that we have. So the trick I'm using on this project is same as my stairs, just placing a basic box. Don't need it to be like that big. And usually what I'm going to do, as you can see here, as soon as I have this box, the, the particle will stop here, same for my snow mask. So what I will do is just select that and move this up in the air until I don't see it inside my camera. So you can see now the snow doesn't enter my project. And if I, at some point, I need to place down a camera and have like a bigger picture of my project like that, in this specific shot, I can just hide this object. So for example, if I have, uh, let's say we have this first image over here and we have this second image over here, I will come back uh, to all in my filter to visualize all my hierarchy. Here I have my box, which is somewhere up here. In this specific image, I want my box to be visible. But in this specific image, I want my box to be invisible. So what I will just do is hide the box and press refresh, recapture. And now it memorizes that in this image, this box won't be visible. So after the snow, um, let's come back inside. Actually, we don't need to be uh, in a media and we don't need to be in a winter. As you can see here, we have like a, a glowing burned wood kind of materials. Uh, it, it's pretty easy to set up uh, just to have a brief look at, at it. In the more of the color, I've loaded a basic burned wood texture, which have this kind of look. And using this texture, I've uh, created a glow map that look a bit like that. Uh, it just arranged uh, all the, the rest of the texture is completely black and only the orange part will start to glow like here. So just it's, it's really basic, maybe something that will add in the future directly inside the library. But I wanted to have that inside Twinmotion. Uh, unfortunately, right now, like the, the particle system that we have in Twinmotion is a bit too big for my for my uh, for my uh, for my fireplace. So I needed a, a bit of trick. So I just use like this kind of burn wood to, to to fake a bit the fact that something is going on inside that. Um, so let's come back to summer, removing that again. As you can see here, I've switched to uh, summer, but the reflection probe are still in winter. So I will need again to just select all of them and click on recapture and come back to all to visualize my uh, full hierarchy. Um, what's next? Um, yes, I wanted to talk a bit about the doors. As you can see here, we have some doors opened. And it's because in Twinmotion, uh, in my modeling tool, uh, in my modeling tool, I correctly place the pivot point of my doors. Actually, let me open back the preference panel. I'm using the shortcut most of the time. It's Control plus P, but you can also open it directly here. And I just come back to my angle snap and switch back to five degree. So here. Now, using my five degree angle, I can just close my doors. So how I did that, uh, I had a lot of questions regarding that. So I've been using 3ds Max uh, for this specific project. So I'm going to show you it on Max, but it will work on the same way. As long as in your CAD software, you can define where the pivot point is. So here is my project. Uh, I have different layers over here on the on the right. So I'm just going to hide the part that I don't need. And here I'm only interested in my doors uh, folder, my door layers over here. So what I did, I separate my doors uh, individually from one to another. And I've placed uh, the pivot point exactly in the middle of the hinge. That means that now I can just play with the my door like that. So what I did then is just uh, export all my doors 
as you can see here we have like also my I also have my window over here, I have my interior door where I just took the time to place the pivot point correctly, but once done it's it's really a, a gain of time while inside twin motion. So I just selected all of my objects in my doors folder, I exported all of that into a separate FBX. Then inside twin motion, uh, let's actually I just hide the, the doors folder I have already imported inside Twinmotion and I'm just going to just reorganize a bit all of that. We don't need all the vegetation we've placed down. And now what I will do is come to the import doc, click on the import button. I will look for my doors.fbx file. By default, Twinmotion import with a collapse by material option and it's not what I want. but I'm going to show you it anyway. So I click on OK. What it will do, it will import my doors and collapse all my doors uh, based on their material. That means that here, all my doors share the same material. That means that all my doors are collapsed as one object. So here, if I imported my door with this option on, uh, I, I can't open them anymore. It's, it's blocked. And as you can see here, all my door has been collapsed with the name of the material. So it's really something to be careful. I usually don't import my whole project with the key hierarchy on because it can quickly drain the performances. Usually I just export the part that really needs to be um, imported as a key hierarchy option and I keep that in a separate file. So I'm just going to hide this FBX file, going to back to import. Here I will import again my doors, but this time I will keep, I will switch to the keep hierarchy option. That means that it will keep the hierarchy I have set up in my CAD software. If I select my, my door, as you can see, I have the correct naming I have set up in my modeling tool. I have the correct pivot point, and now I can just open my door the way I want. So I'm just going back, uh, I'm just going to delete those two FBX and going back to the first one I've previously imported. And as you can see here, I can navigate inside my project, select any doors and just play with it. Just open it like that. Same thing on this side, same thing on my window over here. Uh, next thing after the doors is um, at some point um, when working inside twin motion, uh, you may find you in a, a situation where you have those two lines over here, uh, which is the, the, basically the, the windows, the windowed mode. Uh, if you want to switch to full screen, you can switch to, you can click on F11. You can also click on this arrow over here to switch to the full screen view. Uh, it just basically gives you more real estate. Uh, I like to work like most of the time with a with this view, so we don't see like a top bar uh, that is is just restraining the um, the viewport that you can see inside Twin Motion. Um, I'm usually all of the time just playing with the bar to to just have a better sensation inside my project while I'm navigating, so a better like experience inside my project. Uh, finally, a few things that I wanted to cover is uh, reaching the end, so I'm trying to be as quick as possible to show you a few last things. Uh, when you place down a light inside Twinmotion, <coughs> we are using real value for the light, and by default the max value of the light is 10,000. But this value can be override, so you can manually type up to 1 million. So as you can see here, 10,000 lumen is not enough to light this interior. You can just click here and just add one zero if you want, or even another one. And if you replay with the slider, you will be again um, switched to the, the max value, which is 10,000. So just keep that in mind. Here, if you want to, like, to have like uh, more light, you can just duplicate that in instance. Uh, if I duplicate this light in instance, that means that, uh, let's actually duplicate those lights a couple of times. So 
So the row is set. Just going to the second row. So here I've added my light. All those lights are in instance. Uh, it's visible here by the, the same color that you have on the side. That means that if you customize one light, it will be uh, affecting all the others. So here you can just change the color of the light. You can change the attention, you can change the angle, and you can also uh, enable or disable the shadow. Just keep in mind that the shadow is something that is really greedy in terms of performances. So as you can see here, when I will be turning on the shadow, it will... Ah, not actually that much of this project. It's mostly because I have a really good graphic card, but in most of the case, like turning on the shadow can quickly drain the performances of your machine. So, so just be, be careful with that. Um, as you can see, also the angle um, affect that a lot. So try to avoid uh, enabling shadow on all the light of your project. Try to be like nitpicky. Neat, if you would just have like a, an interior shot like that, you can just export this shot with the shadow on. And when you want to work back inside your motion, disable all the shadows so you can be uh, smooth when you when you navigate inside your project. Um, finally, a few last thing on the on the shadow is um, yes, the fog I wanted to cover. So in the last update of Twin Motion, we have added a new what we call Haze option. So basically, it enables like physical particles floating in the air. So I'm using that most of the time to fake like some fog. Uh, usually I'm just lowering, lowering the intensity of the light, so it won't produce any light anymore. And I'm just using that to produce some fog. In the more here, we have a few settings like changing the, the tiling of the fog. Let me just raise the radius. So you can see here, the, you can have a smaller tiling or like a, like bigger, so you don't see like the different uh, part of fog. You can also change the speed like here, the speed at which the, the fog is moving. And usually what I do is just raise the radius so it covers my whole scene and just lowering down the density. So just a quick way to add some fog would, would be to use like those, those kind of light to, to fake down the particular fog inside your project. Um, finally, uh, one of the last thing I wanted to talk about is the refinement option that you can find at the export. So let me just remove that. What I will do is create an image. On this specific image, oh, I forget to mention that, uh, where you can change the camera size, the, the, yes, the, the ratio of your image. When you are in an image, like here, you click on the more, and here you have the format option that basically allow you to switch to 2K to 4K, or in the more, you can manually type the resolution you want. If you want to change that in a video, so it's it's a bit uh, in, a, in a different place. Like here, for example, let me just create uh, two, different, two different parts. So here I have one video that contains two parts. In Twinmotion, you can't export a video that have one part that is square and a second part that is full HD and let's say a third part that have like a phone format. Like all the format of the different parts need to be the same. That's why this option, the format, the output size option, can't be in the settings of one specific part. It needs to be on the setting of the whole video. So if you want to change the output side of your video, you need to come back in the breadcrumb, enter the more over here, and here you can change the output size. So com coming back to our image, um, I'm just going to switch it to 4K. On this specific image, I'm just going to hide all the interior furniture, and I'm going to make my floor more reflective. Um, in Twinmotion, how reflection work, and basically in all the real-time application, is present inside the reflection. Let me actually hide all the probe. 
is present inside the reflection only what's present inside the viewport. So for example, if you look at the light switch, it's present inside the reflection because I can see it inside my viewport. But if I start to move my camera down, I will start to lose some of the information here, and this will make this information disappear inside my viewport. The first option to have better reflection will be to use some reflection probe. Again, the reflection probe capture a 360 image and it apply this image into the reflection of those objects. So as you can see here, it doesn't solve this problem because the size of my probe is not big enough. It doesn't uh, cover up to this edge of my living room. So I need to change the size. But as you can see here, it doesn't match all the time perfectly the um, screen space reflection. As you can see here, we are in screen space reflection. So you have this nice reflection that is well aligned with my window, but the reflection probe can give you some weird artifact like we have here. It's not exactly well aligned. A second uh, option to, um, to have some better reflection that we have at the export is what we call the refinement that you can find here. So let me select first the image I want to export. I will first export this image without um, refinement. Keep in mind this image uh, is exported in 4K resolution, so it's quite a big image, so it could take a few seconds. Um, now that's done, let's come into the more. I will open the, the refinement option and switch to medium, and I will again export this image with the refinement on, on medium. So basically, uh, while it's exporting this image, let me load, let me open the first image. So, as you can see here, we have our first image that has been exported without refinement. And we have the same kind of problem that you can see here. Here, we don't have enough information on my wall to put this information inside my reflection. But if I open my second image, as you can see here, it has more information. It has more information inside my reflection. So basically, what the refinement option do, it takes the focal of the camera and it gives it a bigger focal. It also enhance the output size. So basically, when you have a 4K image, it will calculate like a 5K image. And then it will crop the image you have calculated to the ratio you have set up. So it basically just add more information to the reflection. But because it's capturing a bigger image, it needs better performances. So it's something to keep in mind if you have like a low-end graphic card, it's something that is really, really greedy. So be careful with that. And also, I showed you this example with a 4K image because natively inside Twinmotion, when you have a 2K image, at the export, we automatically turn on the refinement and leave it on low. But by default, uh, the reflection will be better when using a 2K image. So I think that's it. I've been I've been as quick as possible. Hopefully, we'll have some time for a couple of questions. Uh, if you have you some tips and tricks that you are using, don't hesitate to 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 mention it in in the chat or in the, in the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I think now it's the a time for a couple of questions.